Hello, everyone. This is Akiko Fujimoto. I'm the Mid-Texas Symphony's music director. And today I wanted to discuss um, our upcoming concert, Star Wars and Beyond. And with me, I have our principal trombonist, uh, Donnie Pinson. So hi, Donnie. Hi, everybody. Donnie, um, you know, I invited you because I think your section, the trombone section, has a very busy uh, role in this program. Uh, of course, uh, trombones have a lot to do in big, lush, romantic pieces in general, but especially in film scores and particularly John Williams music, um, it seems like you guys get pretty busy. So um, do you like playing John Williams music and especially Star Wars? Um, yes and yes. Um... Uh, I think brass players in general, you know, tend to really appreciate John Williams. Um, and uh, the low brass in particular, I think we can have a really dramatic role that suits film music really well. Um, you'll hear us sometimes uh, with uh, kind of little motives, uh, melodic material that sounds kind of menacing when we play by ourselves. Um, and then other times you'll hear us playing really softly um, in chorales and, and that can be a really beautiful texture too. And then, you know, other times uh, you might not notice us, but we're part of this big sound of the whole brass section playing together. Um, and you may primarily notice the, the lead voice and the trumpet and, and horn, but we're there underneath, you know, kind of supporting everybody. Um, That's right. You play well. You pal I think trombones play well with others. You know, both with to, upper yes. neighbors and lower neighbors. Uh, but having been an uh, ex trombonist myself, I was a avid trombonist in high school. Um, I didn't get very far after that, but I was. That's all I did was play the trombone, like in high school and middle school, and I was really into it. And as a former trombonist, I have personally great appreciation for the range of expression um, that the trombone has. I think a lot of people think trombones are, yes, loud uh, and menacing, like you said, but I also think we have a very soft side and lyrical side, um, you know, and compared to strings or the oboe or the clarinet or flute, you know, and French horn, they always take the lyrical romantic lines in orchestral music. But I think um, in solo music, um, trombones get to do more different things, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, we, we, you know, we have a ever expanding uh, solo repertoire and, and have some, you know, prominent composers writing for us now and, and some really great, you know, full-time soloists out there. And, and so it's the, tr you know, trombones can really do a lot, you know, that we don't normally get to do in the orchestra. Okay. Um, and, um, but what, you know, one of the cool things about John Williams is, is he, um, I think he understands the technical side of the instrument a little better than, you know, some of the uh, composers of the past, you know, have. And, and so there, there are little things, you know, like the, you know, the very opening fanfare from the main title in Star mm -hmm. Wars, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of really fast tonguing and, and notes, uh, uh, that move around a lot. You know, we're not just sitting on one note underneath all the other brass. We're That's with true. the trumpets having to be really agile and, um, That's and, true. and use a lot of technique. That's true. That's very true. I didn't think about that. And I think um, not only are you busy, but you're playing all kinds of different things, melodic material, uh, as well as harmonic uh, and rhythmic stuff. Um, but now let's uh, focus on stuff where you have the melodies. Um, and I was looking at the program we're going to play this weekend. So for those of you who are joining us um, and coming to the concert, um, this is a concert of Star Wars and beyond. So we are going to play not only music from Star Wars, but we're going to play side by side with pieces of classical music that influenced or might have influenced John Williams to write these pieces for Star Wars. So you'll hear a piece from Star Wars. And then right after that, you'll hear a piece by another composer, a classical music composer that 
bears a lot of resemblance to that piece you just heard or vice versa. So we'll just go back and forth, back and forth between Star Wars and non-Star Wars classical music. Uh, but let's go straight to um, probably the most famous example of the trombones uh, in classical music, the Ride of the Valkyries. Uh, this is a piece from the Ring Cycle, um, a cycle of four operas by Richard Wagner. And uh, some of you might know it as Kill the Wabbit. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a very famous tune and about it's about four female warriors riding horseback. Um, and uh, this is very famous. Uh, this shows up a lot in trombone auditions, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Probably almost every one I've ever taken. So, oh, yeah. so what makes that tune difficult or challenging? Why is it important when you're selecting a trombonist for your orchestra, you know, to make sure they can play that well? Um, I, I think it really covers a lot of, of the bases. Um, for one, it's in, in the key of B, B minor and B major, and that's a... a tricky key for Tremonis to play in tune. Um, and it's got a, a rhythm that can take some practice to play really well um, and really cleanly. Um, and it's all, a lot of it also has to be played pretty loudly and confidently. Um, and then it's a lot of the, you know, the excerpt is the tune and a lot of it is the Tremones by themselves. So it's a very right. important, you know, part of the piece. It's exposed. Yeah. So, okay, so that piece, a lot of people feel influenced probably the most famous tune from Star Wars, which is the Imperial March or the theme of Darth Vader. Uh, so how do you feel about being the villain? Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it's it's a melody, um, you know, that, you know, low brass, we like to be a, a lot of different uh colors you know as you mentioned but we can do a uh, menacing very well and and i think yes. that's a great theme for it it is uh, i know when i i've done uh, demonstrations for for children um the trombone that's a tune i play a lot because everyone remembers it okay oh great and speaking of children um we are playing this concert for the grown-ups on sunday but monday morning we turn around and do a shorter version of this program for uh, fourth to fifth graders um, in the areas in New Braunfels. So we're very excited about that. And I think they will recognize the Darth, Darth Vader theme. Um, do you think um, maybe uh, Hulse Planets, uh, Mars from Hulse Planets, which we're also playing, uh, impacted um, Imperial March, maybe the triplet, um, in the strings uh, at the opening, da -da -da -dun, dun, 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 and maybe that is how you know John Williams was inspired to write uh, Imperial March, the introduction. Oh yeah, yeah, I would agree. He, uh, in fact, the the low brass gets this sort of um, motor rhythm um, that you're commenting on a lot in in his music, and you know where it's like the low brass and the percussion working together to kind of drive the piece forward. Um, and it is, it's very much like, you know, what happens in, in Mars, um, that sort of this, this call to battle. That's right. Exactly. Call to battle. That's exactly what it is. Um, because Mars as a planet was named after a uh, God of wars. Um, so it's very fitting. Um, and obviously star Wars has a lot of fighting in it. Um, and conflict. Uh, so it's very fitting that John Williams uh, might have been influenced by both Mars by Gustav Holst and um, Ride of the Valkyries by um, Wagner, which is also about wars. Um, what other film music, or maybe it doesn't have to be in this concert or Star Wars, but what other film music do you like? And um, what other pieces uh, do you think trombones are featured really well in, whether it's classical or film music? Mm, that's a good question. Um, well, I'd, I'd say John Williams is still probably my favorite. Um, and, uh, you know, I grew up with the Star Wars movies and, ah. um, and just a lot of his 
you know, classic scores have a lot of really fun parts to play. Um, Superman in particular is always an exciting yes, one. That's a great one. Indiana uh, Jones. Oh, yes. Raiders March. Definitely. And um, let's see, Jurassic Park. Um, yes. Yeah, just so, so many. Um, he, and he did the Cowboys, right? Yes. Yes, that's, yeah. a, that's a good one. So. Yeah. I think he's um, really one of the greatest you know, living composers today, whether in film or kind of straight up art music. I mean, I really think he is just one of the number one. And I think he just turned 90. So I hope he lives forever so he can write us more <laughs> great music. Um, and uh, I think he wrote a violin concerto for Anne-Sophie Mutter. So maybe someday he'll write a trombone concerto. Um, I hope so. He he has a, a tuba concerto, so the Tremonists have been clamoring for one for a long time now. Well, then I would say you're next in line. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, that, and then we'll have to pre premiere it at the Mid Texas Symphony. Um, what about some other classical music uh, or symphonic mu music that you know you just love the trombone parts in? Um, well, the, the first one that comes to mind is uh, uh, Bruckner's symphonies. Um, ah. I, I love the way he writes. Um, you know, Bruckner uh, was, was also an organist. And, and for a long time, I've been really interested in, in music for organ as well. And, and so he, he writes, um, Tremones get a lot of big um, chords um, in exciting moments and exciting crescendos. And then also some really dramatic, melodic material too and so his symphonies are always really fun to play and um, i bet you know even if john williams didn't take anything directly from Bruckner's symphonies he had to have been anybody who is a composer today has to have been influenced by Bruckner's symphonies and the, just a grandeur of um you know the sound that he created um uh, because you mentioned chords and you can't play chords by yourself. I wanted to address something that I love about playing the trombone or when I used to play the trombone, which is that you are in a section of three, typically. Mm -hmm. Sometimes John Williams will add a fourth trombone part, uh, you know, like for Raiders of the um, Raiders March and things, but like that, but usually um, in an orchestra the standard is section of three. So, and, um, you know, there's usually two tenor trombones and one bass trombonist and that create a trio. Uh, can you tell us um, something about what it's like to play as a group? Well, I, I think for a, a lot of us, that's a really essential part of our, our training. It's um, is learning how to play together and, and listen as a section. Um, and there's something really magical about it when it's really working. Um, it's um, I describe it as as it's like a an energy um, something you can almost feel tangibly when the chord is in tune when everyone plays exactly together. Um, it, it's um, I think once you've done it, it's easy to get addicted on it, and that's what you know makes a lot of us want to pursue this this type of of music making. I totally agree. I think it is very addictive. Um, I think it's very comforting. And I don't know about you, but I haven't met a mean trombone player. So I think tr <laughs> trombonists get along pretty well, um, you know, and uh, when you have a section, uh, you hopefully have three people who are like-minded or, and if not, you learn to kind of play into each other's styles. And I, it's a very kind of beautiful thing um, that, you know, you work as a team. Um, I also forgot to mention that trombones, aside from being villainous sometimes or <laughs> warriors, are really started out in the orchestra as a religious sound, you know, mm -hmm. as kind of the priests. I always think of the trombone section as the three priests, you know, and uh, in that's how the trombones kind of enter the orchestra, uh, especially in the opera. I think, uh, dramatic music uh, in the 19th century. And um, the most ex famous example I can think of is, is like Mozart Requiem, mm -hmm. uh, which has a huge uh, trombone solo. Tell us a little bit about that solo. Uh, sure. So um, 
the Tremon you know, introduces the tuba mirum movement of the requiem, and um, and it's it's the this call, you know, of of of, of the angel, you know, and and um, it's uh, a great solo because it has several different characters and it's accompanying the the voice, um, the the baritone singer and. Um, so it's sort of a fanfare and then an obligato accompaniment um, to the singer. Um, and it's great because, like you said, you don't get to hear the tremone in that melodic role very often. Um, and, and I'd also say, if I were to go on past Bruckner and name a second composer, I probably would have said uh, Mozart. Um, ah. uh, so for two reasons. One is just I don't, I don't know anyone could really write a melody quite like Mozart. Um, even though the trombones don't get the melody very often, it's uh, right. just, you know, listening to to his writing is always beautiful. And then in pieces like the Requiem and, and the Magic Flute, um, yes. you know, the trombones get some really nice moments. Um, and, and there's, of course, the big tuba mirum solo, but mm -hmm. also all these great moments sing, uh, playing with the choir singing behind us um, and kind of helping to support the choir. And, and that's a lot of fun. That's right. The trombone parts often double um, the lower three parts of the chorus, the human chorus. Um, so people might not know that you guys are playing outright, but you are really in the supportive role there, mm -hmm. uh, as well as sometimes a solo voice like Tuba Miriam. So, um, well, um, I think we started out today's conversation by talking about, you know, there being a lot of great solo repertoire uh, for the trombone. And a lot of people might not be familiar with that because it's not necessarily kind of the top 40 things that make it onto the radio, you know, classical music radio. But um, I saw that you have a solo album uh, with an organist. So tell us a little bit about your um, solo album. Oh, sure. So um, this is something I... I started exploring, you know, many, many years ago um, as an undergraduate, I, I had found uh, a recording of a Tremonist playing with organ and I just love the sound. And I just, I, I love for a lot of the reasons we've talked about loving the way the brass section works in an orchestra. I love the way um, an organ can create so many different colors and such a wide dynamic range, you know, and so Around the time I was working on my uh, doctoral degree, I was uh, playing a lot uh, with an organist in the Dallas area, and, and we started um, exploring a lot more repertoire that most Tremonists didn't even know existed, and that mm -hmm. turned into my dissertation. And then ah. um, a number of years later, uh, uh, we, a few years ago, put out a CD of a lot of our favorite of, of that music. Um, so it's um just a, a lot of fun to play it's very very difficult because of that huge uh dynamic range um but i i think it's uh yeah really beautiful a lot of different colors um and so uh we uh if anyone's interested in, in checking it out um i think there's a it's on amazon or directly from the label uh raven cds um or on my website so great uh, yeah, I'd love it if, if people wanted to check it out. So it's Fantasia. It's called Fantasia. And it features you, Donald Timpinson, on the trombone. And what's the name of the organist? Uh, Damon Spritzer. And so uh, she's a professor of organ at the University of Oklahoma. So a okay. fantastic musician. Um, Great. And speaking of being a professor, you are also a professor yourself, right? Where do yeah. you teach? Yeah, I teach uh, the low brass at Del Mar College uh, down in Corpus Christi, Texas. That's right. Corpus Christi. And I'm so grateful that you uh, and also Mary Thornton, our second trumpet player, drive in from Corpus uh, whenever the Mid-Tech Symphony had a uh, rehearsal or a concert. Um, so we're very lucky um, that you guys come out to play with us. And speaking of Mary, she pr will be providing... Uh, fantastic program notes for this concert because she's a big John Williams fan as well. And she's actually spoken to the composer. Um, so she's very passionate about his music. And um, so I'm looking forward to reading her notes about that. Okay, great. Well, Donnie, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'm going to let you go now because uh, I'm going to talk about 
the other pieces, uh, maybe where the trombones aren't as prominent, but that doesn't make them any less important. Um, but thank you so much for hanging out with me and talking about the trombone and uh, John Williams music. So we'll see you um, over the weekend uh, for the concert next weekend. So. All right. My, my pleasure. Thanks for having me and I'll, I'll see you then. Thank you, Donnie. Hi, everyone. So that was Donnie Pinson, our principal trombonist. Uh, and it was great to talk to him about John Williams and the trombone and uh, all the different um, ways that the trombone um, serves the music in orchestral music and solo music. If you joined us late and missed the portion of his interview, uh, this YouTube and Facebook video will be on our um, YouTube page and Facebook page until the concert. Um, so please um, go check it out again and just hear the first 20 minutes of it. And now I wanted to kind of get back to the concert and talk about the rest of the concert. So I mentioned at the beginning uh, of the talk that this is a concert of Star Wars music played side by side with um, famous classical pieces of music that might have influenced. And I say I might have, but it's there's a direct evidence um, that um, John Williams did, um, was influenced, uh, at least by the first piece that we'll be playing on this concert, which is Korngold's um, main title um, from the music King's Row. This is a three minute fanfare that sounds eerily similar to the main title, the main theme of Star Wars. And uh, I recently learned that George Lucas, when he was writing the script to Star Wars, um, what he did was he would write to music and he would find his favorite pieces of music that already exist and let that inspire him and then write the script. So he was doing that with Star Wars. And he really wanted this to have this romantic lush sound like Korngold. Korngold was a, an emigre from Austria um, and wrote a lot of, uh, came to Hollywood and wrote a lot of um, film music in the 30s and 40s. And uh, some of you probably remember that we played the Korngold Violin Concerto with the violinist Charles Yang back in October as part of American Voices. Um, but uh, so he really defined the sound of American film music. Um, and um, but this is an even more direct link because George Lucas was listening to this music when he was he calls it a temp track in this temporary music that he lets, you know, inspire his script writing. So he was writing this and then he was also thinking, who should I get to write the soundtrack to this film I'm about to, you know, shoot. And he was talking to Steven Spielberg and Spielberg said, oh, I have the perfect guy for you. John Williams. He just did Jaws with me. He's amazing. He's the best composer around. You've got to get him. And so that's how, you know, George Lucas uh, connected with John Williams. And um, he would send John Williams uh, kind of the uh, scenes that he filmed and parts of the script, um, parts of the story. And then that would still have the temp track with it. So I'm pretty certain that John Williams heard the corn gold going with this part of the film uh, when he was envisioning what the soundtrack might sound like. So this main title from corn gold's soundtrack um, to this movie called King's Row from 1942. It featured Ronald Reagan um, in his younger days. This is a very, this is a very kind of a dramatic story with a very tragic uh, turn, uh, you know, for the main character that Ronald Reagan plays. But at the end, um, he recites a poem, um, Invictus, um, uh, by Henley, uh, the British poet during the Victorian era. And of course, Invictus in Latin means undefeated or unconquered. So this is a poem about not giving up and being strong even in the face of um, some tragedy. And uh, you know that I am um, this quote, um, 
I'm the master of my fate. Um, this last line um, in this poem, Invictus, this is actually the words that the chorus sings to his main theme, um, Korngol's main theme in King's Row. And so whenever I think about John Williams writing this main theme, the defining theme for Star Wars, I can't help but think that he must have had this idea in his head, this inspiration that whoever the hero of this movie is, you know, Luke Skywalker and all the other heroes and heroines in this, they have to be strong. They have to face a lot of dr drama and difficulties and they have to overcome them to achieve a goal which is something that we can all relate to. And um, I think that's why this King's Row theme was a perfect inspiration for John Williams' main title for Star Wars. That sense of uh, optimism, hope, uh, strength, inner strength, and uh, perseverance uh, that are universal themes throughout the Star Wars franchise. So that's how we're going to kick off this concert. Um, of course, we then jump to a lot of other elements of John Williams' Star Wars soundtrack that and the corresponding classical music. We already talked about the Imperial March, the Darth Vader theme, and um, how host planets, Mars, might have influenced that, as well as Wagner's Rite of Valkyries. You will hear both of those pieces in this concert, along with Imperial March. Uh, but there are a couple other um, things that... Um, we're going to play, and um, one is this whole concept of a light motif. A light motif is a term that actually we heard Wagner, um, you know, that, that's associated with his music, um, the composer of Rite of Valkyries, uh, and his music dramas or operas. He assigned each character, each you know, primary character in the operas, a theme that when you hear it, you immediately know something is happening to that um, character. And John Williams does the same thing. Uh, so did many other composers. Um, and uh, one of the examples we're going to play for you is Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. Uh, there's a famous theme that um, is about the main character, Swan Odette. And she's a tragic heroine in the ballet, Swan Lake by Tchaikovsky. And this oboe theme, beautiful theme that I think a lot of you will recognize, comes in when the prince, her love interest, first sees her as a beautiful swan in the middle of a forest um, and the lake. And uh, this oboe, beautiful plaintive solo comes in and uh, it's echoed by the entire orchestra later in the piece this is her leitmotif. This is her theme, Odette's theme. And this concept is used a lot in Wagner's operas and John Williams' Star Wars. Um, I talked a lot about the Imperial March being Darth Vader's theme. Um, many of you know, um, if you watched The Phantom Menace, and uh, you know about Anakin Skywalker, we're going to play Anakin's theme. And uh, it's a very beautiful piece. A uh, beautiful theme, but toward the end, you're going to hear Darth Vader's a shadow of his theme come up. So those of you who know the story of Star Wars and Anakin Skywalker, you know the relationship. So John Williams did the same thing with these light motifs that Wagner and Tchaikovsky and all the great composers did. So it's an extremely sophisticated, but such an effective uh, technique um, that John Williams used to kind of express what's happening with each character. And um, it's just fantastic. John Williams is also known for beautiful, beautiful sweeping melodies, romantic uh, lush melodies. And uh, we're going to play for you Princess Leia's theme um, from the Star Wars suite. Um, it's played primarily by the French horn, um, but of course, like with everything else, the entire orchestra echoes this beautiful melody. Um, Princess Leia is beautiful, but she's also brave. And of course, later in the franchise, she becomes the leader. Um, so it shows, you know, a lot of that promise, early, early promise of her strength and intelligence and bravery, courage. 
and that we're going to play for you one of the most famous examples of a romantic melody. And this is Tchaikovsky's Romeo and Juliet, the love theme from his um, overture fantasy, Romeo and Juliet. And uh, this is one of those things, I think once you hear it, you go, oh yes, of course. Um, and John Williams' gift for writing romantic sweeping melodies, of course, I don't think he would deny that, that those great composers that came before him uh, influenced him like Tchaikovsky and his Romeo and Juliet overture fantasy. Um, another thing that we're going to touch on in this concert is ceremonious music. So I think a lot of us have marched to Elgar's um, Pomp and Circumstance March at our graduation ceremonies. Um, it's the second lyrical theme from Pomp, Pomp and Circumstance, number one, um, after the march part is over. And it just has this wistful um, sense of remembering all your great achievements and the congratulating each other. Um, and perhaps the fact that it's used so often in graduation ceremonies, at least in the United States and maybe some other parts of the world too, um, I think that might have stereotyped that piece in our minds as a graduation piece and ceremonious music, uh, something about achievements. But, um, you know, John Williams actually wrote something very similar for uh, a scene called Throne Room, where all the heroes are receiving um, honors and awards for their bravery. And, uh, and it goes into the end title, the end credits of Star Wars. So it's absolutely a perfect um, gesture, uh, whether it was a direct influence from Elgar's pomp and circumstance, we will never know unless we ask Mr. Williams himself. Uh, but there's an uncanny resemblance between the two pieces, Elgar and John Williams' throne room from Star Wars. And uh, it is really, um, both are just fantastic music and it just makes you you know, feel very proud and noble. Um, so I think John Williams was such, um, he was just so spot on with both Star Wars and um, his knowledge of all the music that came beforehand. Um, and uh, in an interview, he kind of called himself and his generation of, you know, composers, the grandchild of composers like Eric Kongel and Max Steiner, um, Kurt Weill, all those European immigre composers that came into Hollywood and really um, changed the film, you know, really influenced, built and influenced the soundtrack, um, American film soundtrack landscape. He calls himself and that generation um, a grandchild of those composers. So he does not deny the link, um, you know, all of us musicians are children and grandchildren and great grandchildren of all the great composers um, and their works that came before us, whether we're performers or um, students of music, um, you know, which we all are because we have to study the music that we perform. We're all influenced. And I think composers, especially, they are known to make a point of listening to every kind of music and to know as much music as possible. I really admire them for that, my friends who are composers. And uh, even if it's not their kind of music, they seem to know it all. And this is because you learn from the best. You learn from the music and composers that's to the test of time. And uh, it gets passed on to you, your heart and soul and your brain. And even, you know, whether on purpose or not, um, intentionally or unintentionally, it becomes part of your uh, diet and your your body of work, you know, as a musician, and um, it informs what we do um, with our own original work and recreationist work. So that's what this concert is about. Um, this concert is about one, maybe the best example of a great composer um, whose influences from those composers and works that came before him are really seen and felt in a masterpiece like the music of Star Wars. So 
I hope we'll see you there um, on Sunday, April 3rd uh, at the New Braunfels Civic and Convention Center. Uh, we will be set up on stage, um, most of us on stage right in front of you. It's going to be a very cozy situation there. Um, it's not a normal concert hall, you know, but um, it's we like the intimacy there. Uh, and the fact that the audience and the orchestra are as one. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, this is a concert where we alternate between Star Wars music and classical music. So you'll hear one piece for five minutes, you hear another piece for five minutes, boom, boom, we go boom, 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 back and forth. So it should be really fun and entertaining um, for everybody um, who likes Star Wars and the music and uh, also all the great classical music uh, that might have influenced it. So thank you so much for joining me and Donnie today. And we look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>